Hello everyone, welcome. Today we are seated with Dr. Miyuchi from Kuma Hospital in Kobe, Japan. Welcome Dr. Miyuchi. Thank you for coming to Kuma Hospital. Now it's an honor to be seated with you. It's an honor to be at Kuma Hospital because this is really the birthplace of a lot of what we read about active surveillance. Mm -hmm. It all started here about 30 years ago. Mm, and yes. And we've done interviews in the past, uh, when I've been here a couple times in the past, and we talked about active surveillance. I hold the topic close to me because I had a thyroidectomy that did not go well. Mm -hmm. And I think if I could go back in time, I would have chosen to do active surveillance and not done a surgery. Mm -hmm. So I have even more, I think, uh, personal interest in this topic than uh, somebody who didn't because my surgery did not go well. Dr. Miyuchi, what are the latest developments in regard to active surveillance around the world right now? Well, because go back, mm -hmm. and I can tell you right now, you know, on the Dr. Thyroid podcast, I've interviewed over 100 of the top doctors around mm -hmm. the world. I hear feedback. So many are skeptical, mm -hmm. or they resist. Mm -hmm. And now, though, I think there's a little bit of a shift. Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, I'm an endocrine surgeon. I'm a surgeon. So for me, the outcome or result is the best. We, we have to think about the outcome. If the big surgery gives the, the best outcome for the patient, I do big surgery. Small surgery is gives best surgery, best outcome. I do small surgery. If no surgery gives the best <coughs> outcome, I do not do operation. That's my uh, basic concept. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, regarding the papillary micro cancer, and they recently the number of the thyroid cancer detected. Uh, is increasing rapidly in many countries, including the United States and Japan also, and many countries. That is uh, basically due to increase in detection uh, with the new uh, devices, such as ultrasound, CT scan, or MRI, or something like that. And, uh, well, the incidence of thyroid cancer increased nearly uh, 10 times uh, during the 30-year period in many countries. But the death, death due to thyroid cancer uh, st almost stable, not increased. And the increase was mostly due to increase in small papillary thyroid cancer. And many autopsy studies revealed, revealed that uh, uh, patients who died of non-thyroid diseases uh, uh, had small thyroid cancer. Many autopsy studies uh, reported that. If we look at the incidence of uh, small thyroid cancer, uh, larger than three millimeter in size in autopsy study, uh, now we can, we can detect three millimeter tumor uh, ultrasound and we can make diagnosis with ultrasound guided fine needle aspiration. So the incidence is three to six percent, not only in Japan, but also in the other countries, including the United States. Mm. And uh, you know the three percent, six percent of the general people do not suffer from tumor around the neck. Mm. They not, do not die of thyroid cancer. So I thought these are small thyroid cancer, but stay small. That is my concept. But, but, of course, some of them should grow in size. Any advanced large tumor was a small thyroid cancer at its origin. So 
how to identify uh, tumors that grows. Well, I thought that observation, not doing immediate surgery and observation closely. And if the tumor sh uh, increases in size, then we can do uh, operation for these patients. Even if it comes to the one centimeter or 1.5 centimeter, it's still small thyroid cancer. Uh, I can say we can do good surgery for these patients. So that is my idea. Mm -hmm. the, uh, th this approach is later called as active surveillance in uh, uh, European and American uh, peoples. But uh, the concept is no surgery at all, not no surgery at all. Watchful observation. And if the uh, tumor goes, uh, grows, we can do uh, surgery at a uh, good timing. And that is the, my concept. And mm -hmm. uh, the concept started uh, 30 years ago, 1993, exactly 30 years ago. And we have uh, published many papers, and we are uh, uh, updated our uh, data. And well, if we define uh, the tumor growth as enlargement in the mm, tumor size three millimeter or larger, the enlargement rate at 10 years is only 5%. Uh, actually, 5.5 percent at 10 years, and uh, the during the observation, a small number of patients uh, develops uh, appearance of the lymph node metastasis in the neck. The incidence is uh, well, uh, recent data is uh, 0.9 percent at 10 years. Well. You might think appearance of lymph node metastasis during active surveillance is a failure of active surveillance. I don't think so. If uh, these patients had uh, uh, operated on at their presentation, the uh, most likely procedure is uh, removal of one lobe hemithyroidectomy, only one side. And uh, in the United States and in Japan and other countries, we do not do lateral neck dissection for these patients. I don't think hemithyroidectomy, just removal of half, half of thyroid, uh, prevent the appearance of lymph node metastasis in the lateral neck. So, uh, at Kuma Hospital, patients who underwent hemithyroidectomy uh, sometimes has recurrence in the lateral neck. The incidence of the recurrence rate is the quite similar to the appearance of lymph node metastasis mm. during the active surveillance. And now you have two surgeries then. Then, the, then if the, 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 it appears the lymph node. Th these patients uh, require two surgeries, thyroidectomy mm. and neck dissection. If the active surveillance, during active surveillance, lymph node metastasis appears, we do total thyroidectomy and neck dissection, one surgery. One surgery. But anyway, these patients have excellent outcome. Patients will not die of the disease. So I think one surgery is better than two surgeries. Dr. Miyuchi. You have been a surgeon for over 30 years. How many patients have you seen die from papillary thyroid cancer? No. Uh, we have seen uh, about 3,000 patients on uh, active surveillance, but none of them died of the disease. Of course, some patients died of other Something diseases. Else. Let's unwrap really quick what 
Dr. And Miyuchi. Also, and, and also, none of them developed uh, distant metastasis, such okay. as pulmonary mm. metastasis or yeah. other metastasis. This is really important for the viewers and a patient that's considering thyroidectomy or has been diagnosed with cancer. And we hear the word cancer is so scary. In some times, the patient gets so scared, they say, do the surgery. But I think it's so important to unwrap what you said. 6% yeah. of people have. Mm. Six percent. That means in the United States, almost 20 million people have thyroid cancer. They yeah. may not know it. They're going to die from something else. They're going to die with it, but not from it. Mm -hmm. I think that is so important. And then the other thing that is being said is the active surveillance patients mm -hmm. have not died from papillary thyroid mm -hmm. cancer. They've died from something else, maybe. Yeah, Philip. Uh I want to give you one more important information about the, during the active surveillance for a long time period. Well, uh, unexpectedly, uh, many patients shows decrease in tumor size during observation. Uh, nearly 20% of the patients shows clear decrease in their tumor volume without without such a, without any so, so wait a second you heard this right uh, for people listening or watching Dr. Miyuchi just said sometimes the cancer shrinks yes yes and also some of the volume hmm? the volume goes down the size is decreased decrease. that means the volume is decreased it's a very novel idea that people cannot believe what you just said. Well, but uh, our data clearly shows. Now, a footnote to this, thanks to Dr. Miyauchi in one of his past interviews on the Dr. Thyroid podcast, uh, a patient listened. He was so scared. He was diagnosed with thyroid cancer. He listened to the past couple interviews with Dr. Miyauchi, decided not to do surgery. And I just got an email from him uh, recently, like a year and a half later, and he did say that his uh, thyroid, uh, the nodule and the cancer size is shrunk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, uh, Philip, you at the beginning of this session, you told about the many physicians are uh, reluctant or spe spectacle or yeah. skeptical or skeptical. something like that. Sure, let's yeah, talk about that. Yeah, well, well, uh, when we, we talk about the uh, cancer, any place of cancer, detecting the uh, cancer at its small size, small stage, it's uh, it's uh, it was regarded as a best solution, a very good solution to prevent uh, death from th uh, any cancer. But nowadays, uh, many at many places, for example, prostate prostate mm -hmm. cancer, detecting too many small breast cancer might be not so good. And even uh, breast cancer, uh, in the past, precancerous cancer in situ, they say breast cancer in situ, detecting breast cancer in situ, uh, was a very good thing. It is in the past this believed, but recently uh, the concept is becoming changes. Well. The thyroid cancer, especially papillary thyroid cancer, is a very, very typical case. Uh, detecting small papillary thyroid cancer and uh, doing surgery or any other ablative therapy might be doing too much. Mm -hmm. When we consider the natural history of uh, cancer, natural history means uh, natural course of the disease. These are small cancer. It's cancer. It, it's cancer. Even if uh, when if we perform surgery, we find small microscopic metastasis. But at the same time, even if we do not do 
neck dissection, these microscopic cancer rarely become uh, a clinical disease. Mm -hmm. It's very rare. So this is a, a character or nature of uh, thyroid cancer. It's such a paradigm shift to tell patient that when they hear the word cancer, don't be alarmed initially if it's papillary thyroid cancer, or in some cases prostate, or in some cases breast, certain types of breast cancer, mm -hmm. to in fact pause for a minute and don't rush into a surgery that in some cases, in many cases, it's in your best interest to uh, observe. Mm -hmm. I think it's a, a good idea, especially, I can say, uh, it's a very good idea for small papillary thyroid cancer, especially. Well, but, uh, hmm, patients, uh, they say patients are scared, worried, but who make patients scared, worried? I'm not surprised, but maybe it's a uh, doctor's. <laughs> well, Dr. Miyuchi, <laughs> I'll tell you my story. And in my case, I can say that was the case where I was uh, being very hesitant to have a surgery. Mm -hmm. And I remember the day before the surgery, I was driving on the freeway. I got in touch with the doctor and I said, I, I got him on the phone. I said, hey, what if I don't have the surgery? Mm -hmm. Has anyone chosen not to have a surgery, a thyroidectomy for papillary thyroid cancer? He said, oh boy, there was one person. There was one person. His voice got very quiet. I said, and what happened to her? Mm -hmm. she, you know, he said, she, she. He goes, oh boy, I don't know. I don't know. And it was so dramatic. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of saying, that's a good question. I'm not sure what happened to her. Uh, and by the way, there's no real hurry. You don't have to do the surgery tomorrow if you're having uh, these feelings. Uh, I got so scared. So, you know, looking back, and, and one reason we're doing these interviews is to make sure that patients have all the great information available mm -hmm. so they can make better decisions. And I hope people are listening to this interview and not getting scared when they hear the word papillary thyroid cancer? Okay. <clears throat> well, a patient's worry is a very important issue. We should consider about it, but uh, uh, it's deeply related to who explain uh, and how explain the disease to the patient. Mm. It's a uh, it's a very important factor, but I have never seen uh, any clinical medical paper regarding the how explain <laughs> the how the physicians explain to the patients. Well, there is no report. You know, but you said it early when we started this interview. You said you want to treat the patient that in a way that has the best outcome. Mm -hmm. Yes. And for me, as a thyroidectomy patient, I can tell you right now, the best outcome for me would have been to not have a thyroid surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, and in I think it's cases. individual mm -hmm. for the patient because when you assess some of the risks involved in a surgery mm -hmm. uh, and what happens to quality of life when you lose a thyroid, mm -hmm. uh, it can be quite a setback for someone. Well, well Philip, uh, maybe, I want to tell you that uh, even a uh, uh, same number of a uh, same name of cancer, for example, papillary thyroid carcinoma of the thyroid, the, their nature is diverse, very indolent, benign cancer to aggressive cancer. The name, even the name, is the same. The character is very different. If the aggressive cancer, I totally, definitely recommend surgery, sure. of course. So today I told about the 
very indolent, very indolent uh, papillary micro cancer. But aggressive cancer, I definitely recommend the surgery. Mm. It's a different story. Yeah. You know, for those listening, for those watching, if you want more information about this topic, there's been uh, some of Dr. Miyuchi's understudies, he, who he's mentored, Dr. Michael Tuttle, mm -hmm. Dr. Louise Davies, they've both been here at Kuma Hospital, Dr. Alan O and Cedars. Uh, you know, you'll find those episodes, you can find those and listen to more information about active surveillance. But this is a very special interview to be seated with you, Dr. Miyuchi, who really uh, is the pioneer of active surveillance. Any final words to share before we say farewell about active surveillance? <coughs> Excuse me. Well, <coughs> well, <coughs> honestly speaking, in the active surveillance, not doing immediate surgery and observe is a new approach. When uh, physicians uh, or p patients are exposed to new uh, management modality, there are uh, resistance or hesitation to accept uh, that uh, new modality. I think it's a natural reaction. Uh, it's a quite normal reaction. Uh, it, but uh, uh, with my with our 30-year uh, experience with active surveillance, we became more uh, sure that uh, this approach is the first-line management for the patient. And if the tumor shows increase in size, then we recommend surgery. I think that's the best approach at the present time. Great. Thank you so much. Hi. And for those of you watching, uh, if you've been diagnosed with thyroid papillary thyroid cancer, take a pause, take a minute. Don't rush into it. Uh, and maybe the right option for you is no surgery. 